And what is your job here? My job is to screen clients when they enter there. So uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then I go in. <laughs> <laughs> As you come in here, you can see our tickets and ladies. They give you our tickets for people that want to do south drives. They say hi. hi. <laughs> so all the time that will come through for south drives, the ladies will assist them with the tickets to go into the reserve. Thank you. So you can actually get so much around here. We also have our branded uh, items that you can purchase. Our t-shirts, our jackets, very good quality. Intro. I've already introduced myself. Right, my name is Reason. I'll be your guide on this drive. Right, remember the purpose of having this drive is to explore, to have fun, and most importantly is to learn because we as guides, our goal is to expose nature to the people. So please feel free if you've got any question that you would like to ask on the drive, I'll be just right here with you. I can't promise you that I'm like Uncle Google, which you go on your fingertips to get the answer. But I'll try as much as I can to get back to your questions. Eh? Right. In this truck which you are in here, it's just like everyone's house. I guess everyone's house has got rules, man. Eh? This is my house. <laughs> my rules apply in here. Rule number one is not to break the shape of the truck. By breaking the shape of the truck, that means you have to put your arm outside or you put your head outside. Trust me, there are some other animal species that would like to use that head away from you and I guarantee you not getting it there for you. So please stay in the truck, remain seated every time and then I'll allow you to stand up and get your nice selfies and I know that some of us are here for selfies. I can see those faces, I don't want to point at them. So please remain seated, I'll allow you to stand up, get your nice selfies when it's safe to do so. Okay, the Mutongo Rane Lion is a nature reserve that is made up of a thousand two hundred hectares, I can say so, which we have like three to four hundred hectares, which we are keeping only predators in there. Our predators are kept separately from, uh, from the other animals, which are grazers. Right, uh, in that predator camp, we have got white lions, we have got cheetahs, we have got wild dogs, and brown lions. So we're going to be driving straight up there. And then we see that and then after that we'll drive to the wildlife center where we'll be seeing more animals there. 
right, what we're gonna do, I'll be only stopping uh, on our way here when I see something interesting. And then I'll stop quickly and then we can speak about it and then we head up to the predator camp. Alright, is there anyone with a special animal species that would like to see on this on this drive? Leopard. Leopard, I'll try and find them for you. As long as it's not dinosaurs, we don't <laughs> have them here. <laughs> Right, I'll try and show you everything that we I, I can get for you. And guys, as I said, feel free. Let's have fun. This is our day. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's do it. Yes, because animals see this track as a one thing. So if there is something sticking out, then it, they would like to investigate. What and is that? Yeah. yeah, if they investigate, you you won't like that investigation. Eh? Sorry, I have to show you from here. Otherwise, I don't think we'll be able to see them again. And it's only that we're on the higher altitude there. I'm only seeing their backs there. Right, if you look up there, you see those trees, that big tree far on our left. Yes. And then there's those small bushes there on our right. I can see their backs there only. If you can look nicely there, but I don't think you have got those good eyes like me there. <laughs> those are the rhinos. Let's hope maybe when we come back, they'll be better more down this side. Right, for those who'd like to see an elephant, it's your chance to do so now. This is the only one that you can are going to see for today. Eh? That's the only one which we have again in the reserve. As I said, we don't have enough trees to feed elephants. Elephants, they mainly browse. They feed on twigs and leaves. So we are in the grassland biome here. Uh, we don't have enough food for the elephants so that is why we chose to keep that one and then we have got our sacred IBC these black and white beds there these are Egyptian beds if you know the hieroglyphics that Egyptian writing they always uh, put that bed there right I'll quickly stop here so that we can speak about the Watoks. Someone is dead around here. <laughs> right. Uh, sorry. Oh, are you going to be fine? Right, we have got Watoks, also known as Pumba there. Watoks are called Watoks because of their wats which they carry. Males have got two pairs of those wats. Females have got only one pair of those wats. Wats is that elongating skin uh, coming out, protruding behind their eyes here. Yeah. 
I'm sure we're gonna find them. You can see there. You see under the ears, there's th that skin which you are seeing there. That is what we call was. It's W A R T H. Right. Males have got that pair, and then they've got another one close to their uh, tusks here. That is a male, and then female have got only one pair behind their eyes, here, and it's much smaller. These guys, when they run in the grass, you see them picking up their tail, and like an aerial. That is what we call a posmatic colorization. They use it as a follow me signal. When they are running in the grass there, the ones at the back, they can see that tail there and then they know where to follow. Right, and then we have got these donkeys in pyjamas there. I know people when they see a striped donkey is just a zebra to them. Zebras, hey, sorry, I'm not going to stop for too long. Yet. Zebras, eh, they are, we have got two common zebra species in Southern Africa here. Which we have got bachelors and mountain zebras, also known as Hartmann's zebras. Right, the main difference is, look at this guy's belly. It's white in color. There are stripes stop somewhere by the ribs here, and then they've got a white belly. In bachelors, stripes goes all over their belly, they join here. And then look at their neck here. They've got a skin hanging there. That is what we call a julep, a fat lock, where they store their nutrients in there for an animal to go for an extended period of time. That is our Hartmann zebras. Okay. Reason for question. Yes. Are zebras white black with white stripes? <laughs> that or question or I have heard it. All right. <laughs> it's, it, it's logic, eh? Look, it they've is. got a white belly there. Okay. It's white with black stripes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that? Is that a wattle? That is a wattle. It's pumba. Pumba, yes. These guys must come and look who's dead here. Then we have got our vultures. There is the vulture flying in front of us there. You see on top of that mountain there is one, there is some there as well. That is our Cape vultures. We have got a vulture restaurant up there where we go and put excess food from the lions and then they go and land there. Actually it's few today. You get a flock sometimes here. And you see how huge that bed is. Vultures have got a crucial role in the ecosystem. Yes, vultures are cleaners of the ecosystem. A vulture has got a stomach which is designed to feast on carcasses which are infested with diseases. Some other animals can die from diseases like rabies and some other kind of diseases. There is no disease that can prosper against a vulture, especially these wildlife diseases. Yeah, there are many of them right now. No, those are crows. You can look nicely there. The ones in a big flock there, they are smaller than this one flying that side. There is a few vultures there. There is one in that, but that is crows, pied crows.
Like what I was saying, I'm seeing something interesting already. I want you to look on the edge of the dam here. You, uh, you see those white beds there? But before you get to those white beds, look nicely. There is a log on the side of the dam. There is something on top of it. Can you see? That is a terrapin. Yeah. Terrapin, it's, it's like a tortoise, but they live in dirty water. Remember, we've got terrapins, we've got tortoises, and then we've got turtles. Those are our chelonians. So we've got three orders. Those are terrapins, you find them in, in, in dirty water like that. So here is one day close by. You do not scare the guy. I want you to look nicely on this guy. Look under his ears there. There is a lump of skin without uh, without hair there. Can you see that? Right, that is what we call pre-orbital glands. That is where they release pheromones they use to track each other after they scatter. Right, this is blue wild beast. You can see blue wild beast, they've got horns that came on the side and then their tail is black. And then we have got black wild beast again inside here. Black wild beast horns curve in front, and then they've got a white tail, and then they are much smaller compared to the blue wild beast. Blue wild beast, these are the animals that you see on National Geographic there. They'll be doing what we call great migration, where they'll be crossing rivers they will be getting chowed by crocs. Have you seen that? Yes. Especially in the Serengeti Bay. Right. And these guys, mostly you find them associating with zebras there. Like what Mami I was telling her there. Why are they with zebras? Zebras are bulky grazers. Blue wild beast is a selective grazer. So they've got a symbiotic grass with the one there. So they cut the grass shorter. And again, Zebras have got a very good eyesight compared to these guys, so they use them as alarms for potential danger. Right, there is our nice animal there, our springbuck. That is our national animal, remember? Right, springbuck, they come from the desert. That is why they were designed with a white belly. What does white color does to the heat? Why do we wear white? Why are we wearing white, mommy? It repels the heat away, eh? yeah. right? So that white belly it helps spring bugs to cool off as they walk in the hot desert sand there. And then again, spring bugs is one of our municipalia. Who understand what is a municipalia? Sorry, I speak in tongues sometimes. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> A, a municipalia is an animal with a pouch, just like kangaroos. Oh, a pouch, yes. Yes. But springbugs don't use it to put their babies in there like what kangaroos does. Mm -hmm. Right, if you look at his bum there, you can see that white color where the tail is going up to the spine here. Yeah. Right, that is where the pouch is situated. Springbugs practice what we call pronking. Pronking or stouting. Animals pronk or stout. Yeah, but not stouter, the one Naughty. stout which is not. <laughs> Springbugs, if you know them very well, they run and then they start to bounce in the grass. Oh. And then they bend their baby. That is what we call pronking. Okay. Right, when they pronk like that, that is where you, you see now, is, you see where the, the tail is. Yeah. Where it's white, there, that is where the pouch is. When they pronk, they open that pouch and then you'll be seeing by that tail now it will be a white flash, flashy bowl on their bum there all right in that pouch there there is pheromones with the release that is how they attract their legs and then they crawl again to show the predator behind them that look at what i am capable of you won't get close to me <laughs> Yeah, to both females and males. Okay. Yes. Right, this is our place back. The animal which I was saying, they put uh, uh, worms in their head. 
which, they, which always make them shake their heads. And then more blue out this. Wow, there is another guy there underneath there. Can you see that reddish bag there? All right. What bag is that one before I even say his name? Impala. Yebo. Impala's. Right. Impalas, they do separate in two groups, which you will find a group of boys, because boys carry, males carry horns, female don't carry horns. You will find a group of the one without horns, that will be female with one in there with horns. That will be one male in that group. We call it a harem head. And then this building that you are looking at on your right hand side here. Right, this is what we call the boma. This is where we quarantine our animals. In this industry, when you buy new animals, you can't just let them out, join the others. You have to quarantine them for a certain period of time. And then that is when you can let them out, join the others. And we don't quarantine our animals for COVID, like what I've heard. Animals don't get COVID. <laughs> yeah. It's only for quarantine people so that they can at least get adjusted to the bio which you are introducing them to. No. So, okay, now we are going to be entering the predator camp. So as we go through that gate, expect to see a lion from now onwards now. It's okay, I can keep my arm here, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine, it's still okay. Bring some thick pictures. Yes. Isn't this lady afraid of the lion? This one, she's a lion lady. We'll ask her when we come back. These ladies, they've been working here for more than 10 years. I always want that because they open the gates. Yeah. yeah. And they know the lions. The lions know the lions. The lions yeah, they are in. You can see they were here. So, anyway, here you can expect to see a lion. But help me find the male. But when you see a lion, make sure it has got a wheel or it's moving. Because I've been stopped so many times here, only to find out that the rock is not alive. <laughs> because there is a lot of rocks here which looks like them. You can see they were lying down here. Oh, oh they are running away from this guy here. I've never seen He's checking the fence. Yet. There is some here, just here behind us. Behind? Yeah. No, in front. Oh. Not in front. Yeah. Just here. Yeah. Oh, and also there. Yeah. They are, they are looking at that guy there. Okay, what? Yeah, those are the ranges. You can see the only <laughs> Alright, this is what we call white lions. White lions were white like this is because of the recessive malignant gene which we call leucism. That leucistic gene is being carried by the brown lions. So in other ways, what I'm trying to say here, Brown lions are able to give birth to a white lion cub. But brown, the white lions, sorry, they are not able to give birth to a brown lion cub. Because that gene is being carried by the, by, by the brown lion. So what's it called? <laughs> it's <laughs> isn't, it? <laughs> yeah. isn't it you ladies complain that we are taking all of your jobs? <laughs> And I don't you, think you are my brown. One male and two females. I only saw one. Eh? One oh, behind. There's, there's three. You can stand up, it's still safe for now. Uh -huh. Yes, there's another one, there's another one behind. Yes, I can see behind this. Right. Yeah, that is how it is. It's not like he doesn't hunt at all. You can find him in action when they have to bring down bigger prey like buffaloes, giraffes, and baby elephants and stuff. You can, I call him the big guns for the females. So why do you say they? Why the king of the lion, uh, jungle again? Because he is being treated like a king. The females, the, yeah, they are the providers. King in the wild, yes, yes. Right. 
And again, lions have got a short life span. Oh. Which they can live up to 14 years in the wild. And then you can find these ones in captivity like this, it can be a bit extended to 18 to 20 years. Why? Because these ones, if they are sick, we are there to attend them. And then if uh, they don't hunt, remember, we feed them, we bring food for them. So chances of them getting hurt is zero, unless if they fight. Uh, by themselves. themselves and they also get the nutrition because we feed exactly them. we can supplement them and everything all right lions have got a short uh, station period what does that mean gestation oh, not just there is gestation there is oil station period hey I, I thought maybe you are women at least you understand better than me <laughs> right i <laughs> didn't want to say the heat huh? word now i'm gonna say it <laughs> right the lions, when oil station, it's when they are in heat, when they are ready to mate. Oh. That is what we call oil station. All right, it only lasts for three days. And then in that three days, she will make sure you mate with the male for 15 to 20 times a day. Eh? Yes, uh -uh. that is how it is, mommy. But don't worry, it only lasts for long. seven to ten seconds. <laughs> it's not long. <laughs> And then after that, she gets to a gestation period now of 110 days approximately. Yes, it's only like three months, 110 days. Yeah. yeah. And then after that gestation period, she goes far away from the male. She gives birth to a cute cubs there. Why she goes far away from the male? Because the male might kill the... Chop baby. Yes. Males, male lions practice what we call infanticide. Infanticide. Is that when they eat, they kill their own youngs? They do that if they don't recognize them. So for her to avoid that, she will go by the male, play by the male, rub yourself by the male, and then go to the cubs, play by the cubs, and she suckle them. By doing so, yes, by doing so, she's taking the scent between the individual, so that the day when she introduces those cubs to him, they'll be already having his scent. Just like me, when I walk into my house there, I know that she has got this cheap play girl perfume in her, in her handbag there. And then that day I smell Gucci or something strong. Where's the Gucci from? Yes. The and Gucci then from? she has got a lot of explanation to do to me. Where is it from? How? And when? All those things. So that is how it is in the animal kingdom. They use scent to recognize each other. Right. Why the male lion has got that Brazilian on his head there? That will. Yes, it's his shield. Remember, lions have got retractable claws. They bring them out when they want to use them. Right? They smack each other on their face, or when they want to kill, where do they bite? By the throat. Yes, that is where that hair is there, that man. Right? You can find that the rival, when you want to kill him, he can get out with that hair before he gets to the actual throat there. So it's a protective armor for him. Right, and then lastly, most importantly now, one of my favorites. You can see all cats have got whiskers. What is the purpose of whiskers? Why cats have got whiskers? <laughs> Signal. Signal. Senses. Senses. Huh. Yes, it's for sensing. Yeah. Right. In small cats like leopards and cheetahs, which have got to crawl down in small spaces, they say it senses that gap if they can fit or not. But the most important uh, use of the whiskers, they detect the pulse rate. Like when pulse the rate. animals pulse rate, yeah. the, 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 the heartbeat. Just, they use it that just like that doctor's thing where they put here. What do they call it? Stethoscope. Stethoscope, yes. For example, lions, will, when they kill or it's a buffalo, they will grab it by the throat here. They will stay there till it's dead. Who tells them that it's dead? It's whiskers. They can detect the pulse rate. And then those whiskers, they, they say they detect the vibration. That's the pulse rate. And then after that, they take that information to what we call the Jacobson organ which is situated on the nasal area of an animal. The Jacobson organ is mainly used by reptiles like snakes. You see, they always flick out their tongue. What That creepy thing that you are scared of. I know, that is what scares people by on snakes. 
Right, when they are doing that, they are picking up sand particles in the air, and then that tongue goes to the Jacobson organ, and then the Jacobson organ tells this tells the brain of the snake that you can go to your right, the prey has been detected to the right. That is the use of the Jacobson organ. Even in big animals like that, they have it. And then uh, when that information gets to the Jacobson organ, it's being transferred to the brain now, that now there is no more pulse rate here, you can start feasting. Sure. Animals. <laughs> hey, let's go see those guys. Can you see the claws there? Can you see the claws? The claws, mama, like nails. You can't see them when they're like that. All right. Well, okay. Have you yeah. ever seen a lion this close in your life? No. I'm always the lion, lion said. Okay. Lion, but not so close. Okay. No, me, I've been hugging them oh, no. and doing everything to them, but when when they are put to sleep with their feet. <laughs> is that crows or vultures? Eh? Oh, there is crows and yellow billed kite. There is a kite, this one here. You can see it's different, it doesn't have a tie there. This one behind, that is a yellow billed kite. That one. And then the rest is good. How much do these guys weigh? Weigh. Right, I can say to 350, 320 or close to 400. Sure. Because I don't think if you can go even in the Kruger in the wild, you'll find them in this state of health. Because these ones, they are in a five star here. The food just comes, they don't hunt. And then what they are good at is to sleep. Do you know how, much, how many hours lions sleep a day? 20 hours. Sorry? 20 hours, 18 to 20 hours, they spend most of their day sleeping. Why they do so is because they've got a slow metabolism. Also, yeah, exactly. So their digestive system, you remember they've got an acidic stomach, which is designed to digest the skin and fair and heavy food, which is said. So that needs a lot of energy. You'll find them sleeping sometimes in the sun, exposing that belly to the sun, They'll be trying to get that heat through their stomach there so that it can at least speed up that metabolism. Tell me something mm -hmm. with lions. They're mm -hmm. totally carnivore. They don't even eat grass. They only eat grass when they want to clean their stomach. Uh -huh. but they so they are... Lexitude as such. Yes, but they are carnivores. They only eat meat. Meat, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite? What's the food? Food, horse. horse. Like okay. these ones, yes, I have seen horse. We can put cow here, then that cow can stay for days here. And then horse, we will put it today. In, in, in a daytime, you will only find bones. The white ones, uh, this one. Now, to tell you the truth, you are, you, you are trusting the wrong ones now. Really? Yeah. These ones, yes, the females, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you can see that look there. Yeah. So these ones, I can estimate like they are like eight, nine years. Where are the females? There must be somewhere around somewhere here. here no? Maybe this side or under the truck or somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there must be somewhere around here also. Serious, no one can remember what did I say? Yes, the stripes don't go all the way by their belly. So what zebra species it is? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking for the name of them. Mountain 
Indian zebras, also known as art artmans. Yeah. <laughs> I want to remember poking. <laughs> yeah, there is more pumbas with the little ones there. Can you see when they run? You, you see now when they run. You see when they run, look at their tail. When they are relaxed, they put it down. The moment they start running, they pick it up. I can see Ron Antelopes. You can see all that from afar, just. Sorry? I'm saying you can see all that from afar. Yeah. We see one thing there. No, 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 no. <laughs> there is Ron Antelopes there, one, two, three, four. There is Hems Bugs there with the long ones. That is Elens there, that side. And then definitely these are beds. It's ostriches. They only have two legs. Uh, <laughs> yes, these are chicks. They eating the boscos. They are coming there. Right. These ostriches. It was three. It's three families. They mixed together their chicks so that they can at least help each other in raising them. And these are the only successful chicks which I have seen. And then when they put those eggs, they take turns when it comes to incubate them. Mm -hmm. They say females incubate the eggs during the day so that it can at least camouflage with the dead environment around it. And then males incubate the eggs during the night, night so that they can at least blend with the darkness. That is why it was played. Besides being beautiful, eh?
This is what we call our Orexes. This is our games bags. Games bag. Right. These guys are also from the desert. That is why they call it games. These guys have killed a lot of predators in the world. Using those weapons of theirs which they are carrying there. Imagine that one day it can go through that line which you can see, which we saw there. Easily. What they do, they've got a defense which they can get to a tree or a shrub. They stick their bum in that tree there and then they expose those horns to the predator. Imagine if you are a predator, you can't get close to those things there. Mm. Never. Those are, it's what we call our oryxes. Oryxes is an umbrella word for long horned animals. Oh. Big ones. They are much bigger than these. Are they shark spiders? No. Really? No. I've got, I've got it. I've got it. The koi yes. Koi fan use them. Exactly. Google quickly. No. 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 Koi no. Fan use them. They use their blood to paint and stuff. Exactly. It's they could the use movies. everything from that animal. Koi fans, they, they they believe that animal was created directly from their god. You can see if you know the rock paintings which they left there by the caves there. They also always drew an animal there. That is an animal. I forgot the name. It's our common eland. Eland. Our common eland, the largest antelope in Southern Africa here. In which males, we have got a big guy here. Which one? <laughs> ah, there he is. He's facing that way where the pigs are. There, right at the end there. I can see him. Where males they can get up to close to a ton, 700, 800 kilograms. That is the largest antelope. Right, if you, if you can ask hunters today that which animal has got a lot of meat, is the inland. When they go, even if I'm camping, I'm sleeping in my tent, there is an animal walking outside. If it's an inland, I can tell you that is an inland on my sleep. Why? Because when they walk, they click their their hooves like that Khoisan language that isn't it as good <laughs> exactly that is what uh, ex uh, truly we have we have we had a guy from Konami from the desert last yes. week which was, was with us here he's the one who was telling me that and then if you listen to the Elans it exactly it's like a Khoisan sure. speaking That's why they uh. think it's when they walk, if they come, they Yes, from yes. The what what they do when they pick up their hooves, they <coughs> open those hooves because of the weight with they have. When they put it down, those hooves click okay. as they walk. That is our common element. There is the guy, that black uh, oh, yeah, guy. Yeah, you see, he's huge. Yes. Mm. So males have got short Kelly horns. Females have got long, pointy, sharp horns to protect their babies, and then males definitely has to fight. Okay, and coins could use everything from that animal. I mean the horns for, 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 for something to blow for communication. Remember they didn't have Twitter or WhatsApp like us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so and then they could use those horns for instruments and then skin for something to wear for their kids and then meat definitely they could feed their families for a long period of time. Yeah, are they still there? Yes. And they one day they left right? Exactly. They, they, do you know what, what is the name of their language? It's Nji. Nji? Yes. What is it called? Nji. Yeah. We have got the cows. Do you know the cows lodge? It's in the Kalakadi there. That is where they learn. So even the doctor is... He, they want to do that village here. Oh. Yeah. So that is why that guy was here. He was nice. yeah. So you can have the full experience. Exactly. Yo is green this one. Oh that's a good one. Yeah. So it's a potato pies. It's gonna be so funny. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yo, we need. Oh! 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 O
Hi. So Winnie handles the snakes here. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Oh, okay. She loves them. No! Winnie. Uh, let me take a picture of her so she can show her colleagues. Oh. It's heavy. <coughs> okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look, look at me. Don't do anything. I showed you my pictures. Um, no, that's like, oh. Hold it, her. Uh huh. And then you have to hold the neck. We need the neck. We need. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, no. She's happy. She is happy. Oh, let her come. Come, come. show you the things a bit. Happy. Are there? No, take a photo, please. Come here. I take a picture. Come here, bitch. I want them to see. Come here, come here, come here, come here, Sure, no wonder when this thing gets hold of you, you have that choice. Sure. <laughs> you can hold it, but don't choke it just. Just like this? Yeah. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> you can feel him tightening on me. Also. Yeah, that's what it does. I was telling Winnie the other time, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> so. What do you want? And these things, they look harmless, but they're not actually. No, they're not. And your name is Susan, and you work, work here at the Lion and Boma. Yeah. Boma restaurant is one of those heritage restaurants yes um, during the week it's not that busy but during weekends and public holidays we do get busy we normally have functions we have dry areas we have wildlife center and we have the Demla Pagali, also part of us and we have great stuff yeah food and service Okay. Yes. Thank you. We will be around to see you. Thank you. Let me just take a view around. Oh, I like that pose. Eh? I think I must also pose. I don't like that. I know. I took like four, so you'll you'll choose. Yes. 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 Hems, bucks, and elands, and then after that we came up here to the wildlife center. As you can see around me here, we have got dry facilities. We have got leeward monkeys. We have got a hippo pool there, and then we have got our reptile park where you can see anacondas, black mambas, and some other kind of snake species. And then we have got a little zoo like where you can walk around. You can see black jaguars, black leopards, normal leopards, and lynx, and a lot of exotic animals like tigers and everything. And then as you can see, it's a nice place here, which you can come out with your kids, you can have uh, your brides and have some picnics, and then we've got a swimming pool, and everything that you need for your outing. <laughs> and when is feeding time and all that? Okay, feeding times, we have got them on weekends, and public holidays 
and during the week we feed on Wednesdays, it's one o'clock. On Wednesdays we feed our brown lions, cheetahs and wild dogs. Saturday we feed our white lions, cheetahs and wild dogs. And then on Sun uh, Saturday, sorry, it's white lions, cheetahs and wild dogs. And then Sunday it's brown lions again, cheetahs and wild dogs. But that happens at our predator camp where we went up there and we saw the lions and everything. And then on feeding days we also have our reptile show which happens up here by our visitor center where they will be doing a snake show where sister winnie will bring out snake species and educate people with how you can live with snakes and what venom they carry and everything and what time do you open in the mornings and close at night all right we open eight o'clock during the week till five o'clock and then weekends is eight o'clock till six o'clock and public holidays too and you've also got accommodation for people to sleep yes we have got our chalets uh, and our low cabins our chalets they are solar powered lights we have got fridges which are gas powered and then stoves which are gas powered and then we have got our low cabins which have got electricity there it's luxury we have got a jacuzzi outside which is situated on the balcony and then all of those uh, accommodation places they are just a few meters away to our predator camp where when you are sleeping at night definitely you can hear the lions roar and if you are at the lake cabins if you are by your jacuzzi there there's chances that you can see the lions roaming from the predator camp there okay thank you reason thank you very much and thank you for entertaining us thank you very much it was such an honor to meet you guys today hope you have got a fantastic day thank you because if i if you are not enjoying it that means i have to be fine i don't know my job that area so I do conferencing here sometimes, and they love it. Mm. Mm.
why the restaurant I mean, can get. This is the cocktail dish right here. Okay. I'm done. This is our station area and the bombing company. Oh, yeah.